All right, welcome, welcome. Hey, basic land. <laughs> all my future investors and all my experienced investors, I really wanted to jump on here today and um, give you a few tips around property management. Um, so this has been coming up a lot with um, my clients are a little stressed out um, with the different property management companies that they were using. Um, and then what some of my clients getting into a property were looking at like, well, how do I vet them? So there's been a lot coming up around uh, property management. So I just kind of wanted to address that here today. And you might be thinking, well, I don't have property. I don't need to listen to this yet, right? Um, wait a second, <laughs> you know, because um, when you're purchasing property, right? You gotta know where you're purchasing at. Like, so in the five day challenge, we chose your market, right? And in that market, you get to know like, so this is all about holding property, right? This whole group is all about retiring when you desire. And that means holding property and creating assets, right? And cash flow so that you can go follow your passions. So uh, those of you that are just jumping in here, uh, brand new to the group, my name is Joanna Wright, founder of Bottom Line Wealth. And I help women entrepreneurs to create wealth through real estate and keep more of the money that they make so that they can retire when they desire and go follow their passions, right? Retire one life to the next. Um, most of us don't have a retirement plan. We're entrepreneurs or um, work in 1099s uh, positions. And so this is what this is all about, acquiring property so that you can retire when you desire. That being said, back to property management, this is important because when you do buy property, you need to know what, clientele is going to be in there, right? So here's why I say this. If you're looking at a property, um, you're like, you're looking at it cheaply, right? Because you can afford to maybe purchase it. Think about, you have to go with the end vision in mind. If you're going to hold this property, what type of clientele is going to be in there? And you realize this by knowing your market, what's around this property. Is it factories? Is it schools? Is it um, just big boxes towards downtown? Like, uh, you know, like big boxes, meaning Home Depot, stuff like that. What is around this property? And this is going to dictate who your clientele is, right? Um, and that's important because now here comes the property management side of it, right? Who's going to be paying your rent, right? What type of pe people are they? How are they going to take care of your house? So this all comes together. And I want to go over um, a few things with it. Like, like, are you going to do the property management? Are you going to find someone to do the property management? How I teach my clients is to always run the numbers to include property management in the price. I encourage them to please get a property manager because the whole purpose of this is to create a life where it's detached from you so that you're not having to worry about tenants and toilets. It is all handled by property management. Remember, you get to go sit on the beach and sip margaritas. Okay, so um, you can't do that if you're managing your properties. I'm just saying. There's always something that happens. You need to have boots on the ground and that's property management. Um, so, and there could be also, it's not necessarily just you or them. It could be both, right? And I say this because um, so I've done this both ways, right? Uh, where I had a property management completely in charge. And then I was like half in charge, if you will. And I did this because, um, it was in a different area. Um, and there were, um, you know, property management is far away. How's that? Like, there's nothing local. Okay. Um, and so you have to know the area that you're purchasing in, right? So this is a vacation property. Um, you have to know exactly what kind of clientele is going to be going there. So when you're choosing your property, you get to have your clientele in mind when you do that. So let me give you an example of one of my clients. Uh, she bought a property in Pittsburgh, um, Pennsylvania, and... Um, she had no idea the clients that were going in there. She has no idea um, really the area too much, right? She's in California and um, 
the property management did not really advise her that well. So we're going to get into how to vet your property management in a second here, but she relied on somebody who had great, re great reviews and they really didn't do a good job. They didn't really service her very well. Okay. Um, so all the questions that I ask, right. Okay. What kind of clientele is in there? She says, I don't know. Well, what kind of credit score did they have? I don't know. They didn't share that with me. Well, what kind of, um, what does the lease agreement say? I don't know. They didn't give it to me. And so all of these things I'm going, how, it's your business, right? And so she had no idea how much she really needed to know um, until she got into the situation. And so this is why I'm doing this training video. Uh, everything that happens, uh, happens for a reason, right? And we all get to learn. It's either a win or a learn, right? There's no failure. There's just learning, okay? We just get to learn how to do things greater, better, and more exciting. <laughs> Uh, and in a funner way, right? In a funner way. And so I'm using this example because it's important to be in charge of the property manager. So here's what happens most of the time is when I talk to people that have properties and they have property management companies, it's the property manager that's in charge of the landlord <laughs> instead of the landlord being in charge of the property management company. So in my company, we're very... Um, uh, it's very important. Your leadership is very important when doing business and you're only going to do and be as much as your leadership is. So raising that bar creates a better environment for everybody, right? So leadership is, there's no blame. There's no pointing fingers. There's just uh, problem solving, right? Like speaking solutions. So what's the solution to this, right? So understanding how your property management company works is going to help you to have a better time where you could relax, okay? Um, so if you're choosing to do the property yourself right out of the gate, here are some things that I want to make sure that you do not do, okay? Do not do. Think, so when you put, uh, you get a hold of a property and you want to put it on, let's say Zillow to advertise for rent, right? There's things you cannot say. The Fair, Fair Housing Act, uh, you could look it up, Google it, and see what it is. But there's some things that you cannot say. You cannot say um, only women could live here, right? You cannot say um, no wheelchairs, right? Because there's stairs. Nobody in a wheelchair can come. That's not for you to decide, right? You cannot say um, only Christians can live here, right? Or only a certain religion could live here, a certain color, race, national origin, whatever it is. Um, and you can't say senior housing in some cases. So there are some states that are different and they feel differently about it. For the most part, I would not say senior housing, okay? Um, and do not say walking distance. That's the other big thing. So walking distance, uh, it's considered to be discriminatory to those who are unable to walk, believe it or not. So there's lots of little tricky verbiage going out there. Um, just identify with that. And uh, I think um, there was another one too that uh, I heard this lady say, she's like, oh, well, no, you can have uh, this house over here because you're single. You don't have a man. <laughs> you just take the smaller house. I'm like, oh my God, she could be so sued for that, right? Um, anyways, there's a lot of things. You cannot assume someone's pregnant. You cannot, you know, it's just weird. You could be sued for so many different things now. So just be careful, be neutral with what you're saying in your ad because any one of those things can pop off and then they can sue you for discrimination, okay? So if you're doing this yourself and you're accepting payments, um, there's, you know, software out there like Tenant Cloud. Um, there's different ones. You could also do a direct, uh, like use a merchant service for them. Um, through Tenant Cloud, you actually get to save on merchant services because you could do an ACH, automatic charge uh, transaction, um, so that you're not having, they're not having to pay a credit card fee, right? Um, so you can, uh, take payments through Tenant Cloud. 
Um, and, and then there's others out there too. I won't list them all, but um, I mostly wanted to get into things not to do and how to know what your ideal client is, right? And so you also want to know that they can make three times the rent, at least three times the rent, right? So having that check, having that application and checking them that they make first, last and security is typical, right? And some people, so like my property in Georgia, the property manager said, well, we don't do last month. We just do first and security. I said, I don't care what you guys normally do. This is my business and this is how I run it. Okay. So I got first, I got last and I got security. Okay. Um, it is your business. This is your property. So don't ever forget that. I don't care what the property management says. There's ways to work it so you guys can cohesively work together. It's not just their way. It's your guys' way, both ways, right? Um, <clears throat> and then um, I think it was like you can get two times the rent for security in most states. Um, I know Georgia didn't even have a limit. You could charge whatever you want. And I went, oh. So the typical across the nation is about two months. Um, max for rent or for security deposit. And then always keep that separate. You can get in trouble if you commingle that, okay? Um, so just ask for what would be normal. I just do one month. Uh, you could do two, but I do one. Uh, and again, the security stays in its own account. You don't mix it up. Um, lease agreement, and there's like way more details to get into that I'm leaving out, but this is just a generic play-by-play. -play to let you know what you don't know yet, right? To let you know what you don't know yet. Because uh, what I hear a lot is, well, I didn't know that. And then now I'm in this predicament. So I'm giving you kind of a heads up in multiple areas of property management. So that if you have a question, we could deep dive into that question. I hope that makes sense. Um, your lease agreement, when you make it, it should be um, one year for the first year and then automatically go month to month afterwards. Uh, that's typical. So remember that your property manager gets paid to move people in, move people out, and evictions, okay? If they don't give a crap about who's going into the property, like, oh, well, I'll just do an eviction. I get paid more anyways, right? And then I get another move in. I get paid more anyways, right? So you'd be amazed how many property managers think that way. <laughs> so uh, know what is going on. Um, and if you get a feeling that that's what's going on and that they're just like, well, whatever, I don't really care who's going into your property, then you may need to consider a new property management company. Um, and then just have everything set up to begin with, right? If you're going to outsource management, know what to ask them, like have a checklist of things that you need to know. Um, don't just leave it up to them to tell you how it works. All right. It's again, it's your business. You get to tell them how you want it to work with their business. It's not either or. Right. It's you work together cohesively. Um, you should ask them how many properties that they uh, manage. You should ask them, um, do they invest in real estate? Right. They'll understand the landlord mentality if they do. Um, and then how they, uh, how long have they been doing it? How many evictions have they done since they've been doing it, right? So these are all key things to ask a property manager because then you get to know them as a person too. They're like, oh, I did like a hundred evictions this year, you know, and I manage 150 properties. Okay, well, there seems to be a little discrepancy there. <laughs> um, I'm just using that as a wild example, okay? Um, so just know who the biggest thing I can tell you right now is just know who your clientele is going to be when you actually land a property. Okay, when you actually land a property, who is going to be that person that comes in there? Is it a student uh, close to college, right? Is it a, um, a factory worker? Is it like who is that person, right, that is going to be staying there? So, and I also say this because in, in Coming back to my client's uh, property, she has the property in Pittsburgh, um, Pennsylvania, and um, she had no idea 
first of all, the area, who the clientele was going to be. And the property management company, you think would have known a little bit better, but what they put on the ad was must have 700 credit score or higher. And it's in a lower income area. So um, there was not many people, given the averages, there was not many people that would meet that criteria that wanted to live in that neighborhood, okay? So no, the clientele moving in there, and again, it's not always the credit score, it's what's on the credit. Once you have the credit, you could see the story of that person. You do not want evictions. You do not want judgments, right? You need them to be uh, uh, mindful of their credit, even though it may not be perfect. And especially now more than ever, because a whole lot of life happened in the past couple of years and uh, people's credit got pretty much ruined because of not having a job or having to close a business or, you know, just a lot of things have happened that were out of their control. So if you're only basing it on a 700 credit score, I mean, her property sitting there three months vacant because of it. it's not, that doesn't fit the clientele that is living there. So anyways, she's already fired them. Uh, but uh, it's uh, something I wanted to put out there because I keep hearing this repetition of, well, I didn't know how to bet my property manager. I thought we just gave everything to them. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and it's sad because it's the same thing with realtors, right? It's the same thing with realtors. We expect them to know about investing when they don't know anything about it, okay? It's a very small percentage that does. Your realtor is a service person. Your property management company is a service person. They don't necessarily understand real estate investing, right? So huge difference. And that's why that's one of the questions that I ask them if they're a real estate investor. Because then they, I know they have a little bit, at least, of the mentality of it if they own property of their own, right? And then um, you could see that typically when that person is an investor, they have a little bit more care with your properties. My experience, uh, my experience. Um, so just wanted to share that with you guys here today. So if you're looking to uh, land property, everyone here wants to purchase property, get all the property. Um, and you chose your market, you want it to be in this area, ask yourself why that area, is it your backyard? Is it a um, place you wanna go? Is it, what is it? And then what kind of clientele is going to move in there, right? And are you willing to work with that type of clientele? Some people won't accept students. Some people won't, will not accept section eight. Some people will not, like every investor has their niche, right? And whether you like it or not, good, bad, and different, it doesn't matter. Um, it's your business. You get to choose, right? That's the way of the world. We get to choose. So I invite you guys to um, give me a little feedback, what you thought of today's training, questions you have around property management. And um, if you're confused about your market, like, well, okay, now you tell me this, Joanna. I'm not sure I want to do it in my own backyard, or I'm not sure I want to do it in this particular area um, because you don't understand the clientele that you may get, right? So anyways, I don't really hear anyone speaking about that when they talk about, oh, you can invest, you can flip houses, you can do all these things, right? Um, we're here in this group to acquire properties, to hold either short or long-term, to create the cash flow that gives us the retirement that we're looking for at any age so we can go follow our passion, right? So with that, uh, I hope you're having a wonderful day. I look forward to your comments uh, and what more you wanna hear about. Uh, type value in the comments if you got value and I will see you guys in the next training. Bye.